Within the last 12 months, we've received two blockbuster films which set up the finale of a franchise or a saga. These being 2017's Star Wars The Last Jedi and 2018's Avengers Infinity War. Both films received critical praise for their ingenuity, creativity and overall addition into their respective franchises. However, it's clear to me that one film did a superior job at building up to its final film. That being Infinity War. While The Last Jedi has its fair share of fans that believe it succeeded in doing the same, Infinity War has almost every one of its viewers excited for what's to come. Let's talk about The Last Jedi first. While earning a lot of money, after several months the film has been berated by fans. I even came out of the movie theater feeling next to nothing, just thinking that happened, but it didn't leave much of an impact. A disconnection from The Force Awakens and a sense of completion about a few problems that limit the effect this film has on setting up the untitled Episode 9 film. Before I talk about the final scene, I'll explain the story. The Last Jedi follows three distinct storylines through Poe, Rey and Finn. Each went on their own separate journey, for the most part learning about the importance of failure. The film continues on with the Resistance calling for help, but not receiving any. All hope seems lost until Luke Skywalker comes and distracts the First Order. The 12 or so survivors escape and are saved by Rey, who although did not train on screen with the Force, moves many boulders to save them. The villain of Kylo Ren is shown to be deceived by a Force projection of Luke, and loses his grasp on the Resistance. While he loses control, Luke is shown becoming one with the Force, and while not emotional, it is a well done scene. Although this all seems acceptable, it feels complete. To set up a finale, many what ifs and questions on how the journey will occur must be left for the audience to ponder. A surprise ending which subverts the audience expectations also suffices. Here however, Kylo Ren is presented in an unredeemable manner, so his death is more or less imminent. Finally, the heroes escape on the Millennium Falcon to a safe position. On the ship they show no sign of loss or sadness. Rey feels like Luke's death had purpose. And although she defied everything he taught her, she doesn't seem worried for what has come. Finn, Poe, Chewie and the other survivors all stand around happy, talking and joking around. They act as if they didn't just lose a majority of their ships and crew. They seem to have forgotten that nobody responded to them when they reached out for help. The film's ending takes away from the actual gravity of the character's decisions and its situation. It completely contradicts with what the film is trying to share. A quick comparison to the previous middle installments through the other Star Wars trilogies can be made. The Empire Strikes Back ended on a somber but somewhat happy ending with Luke having a robot hand, Lando and Chewie going out to save Han, who is still frozen in carbonite. There's the idea that there's more to come with the contained story from the film itself being completed. The Attack of the Clones does a similar thing. The Clone Wars begins, Palpatine who is to become the Emperor of the Galaxy looks over his new clone army. A devastating war is coming, the end of the Jedi Order is coming, but then we see something of intended beauty, Anakin and Padme's marriage. Say what you want about the execution of their relationship in the films, closing on them being happy reflects a similar tone of that from The Empire Strikes Back. The Last Jedi does not do that. It doesn't have to be the same as the previous Star Wars films, but it should have created somewhat of a similar feeling. Instead we have the heroes who are significantly outnumbered and outclassed, happy, ignorant to the ordeals they have just faced, not only in The Last Jedi, but The Force Awakens as well. Together both of these films occur over the course of one week, max. However. Infinity War may have come out a few months after The Last Jedi, but the impact it has had on moviegoers wondering anxiously about what will happen next is immense. The film already did what fans did not expect, by successfully handling over 20 characters from several different movies in this one film. They also presented the villain as the main character of the story. Characters continuously showed the ability to defy Thanos to the point where the few of them almost took the Infinity Gauntlet off him, and one of them almost killed him. The film continues to explore the theme of sacrifice, with Steve Rogers not wanting to sacrifice Vision's life, 
Thanos not wanting to sacrifice Gamora, Star-Lord actually sacrificing Gamora, and more. Like The Last Jedi, these occur across three distinct storylines, Thor's, Captain America's, and Iron Man. Each had a storyline where they overcame a small obstacle, which prepared them for the final fight. Their decisions and emotional moments build up to a climax of the film, and although it is separated into two distinct fights, they blend together so well as to not drag on or ruin the film's pace. Finally, after watching our heroes endure hardships and deal with the idea of sacrifices being made, we receive the emotional cliffhanger. What is this cliffhanger? It's the heroes that fans have been following for 10 years losing. Losing half of the galaxy's population, our heroes are affected traumatized by what they just endured. Tony loses his son-like figure in Peter and watches what he dreaded in his dreams become a reality. And Captain America, finally, after several movies, loses hope. Thanos has accomplished his goal. He smile and rests somewhere in the galaxy. He won. And how do our heroes respond? Oh, God.